What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Torino Career Mode. This is episode number 81 and we start today's episode off with transfer deadline day here with Torino but of course there was only one player we were after. That was Marco Verratti. Uh, of course we offered a bid for PSG's midfielder but they said they wanted £61 million which of course after the purchases of Neymar and Raheem Sterling we can't afford that. We can get just under £39 million so it's unlikely Verratti is going to come to us even though there is over his valuation right now. PSG hold a midfielder in high regard. Not a real surprise, so do I. So he put in a bit of £39 million pounds plus Manolo Gabi Dini's. He is on the transfer list right now. But unfortunately, PSG just said, we're not interested. We want to keep Verratti here. So I said, OK, why don't I change Gabi Dini with Grenier? And as you can see, they come back to us artists and said, we're not interested. Just leave us alone, basically. So Verratti is not going to come and join us here at Torino. At least not in this transfer window. At least not in this transfer window. It's a real shame because, yes, there are other quality central midfielders out there but he fits the mold of the exact type of player I want someone who's young enough to continue developing someone who's already a world-class midfielder listed in the game I always think 85, 86 plus is your sort of standard for world class uh, players up, I'd say. Um, so Verratti fits that mould. Plus he's Italian, which is just perfect for uh, for me as I like to sign players that come from the same nation as the club as much as possible. And he's just got such an amazing range of passing skills. So Verratti coming in would fit the mould. Now he changed formation perfectly, but sadly we just can't get hold of him. So that's just how it is. Uh, still, Galliardini is on his way out of the club uh, to Gratone, I think it was. Maximo is staying here, which is fine. So one of our academy players players leaves. He's actually growing quite a few ratings uh, despite not uh, not getting too many minutes in the past couple of years but either way 62 overall is never going to succeed here and uh, that's totally fine with me. And also a transfer we came in for Pontus Janssen. Lazio want to take our Swedish centre-half for £3 million. One of the very few centre-backs that's been growing at uh, Torino but he's 74 overall. His contract is up at the end of the year so instead of losing him on a free agent we'll get £3 million from up front and that's totally fine with me. It does mean we've got like one centre back less in the reserves which is always a little bit of a shame because I like to have at least two there's only one now in Engels but either way not a real shame I mean at the end of the day we can we can move Masashi back down to play centre half Maximovic is on the bench right now you know it's it's not a big deal and, uh, and there you go just gives us a little bit more money even though we haven't uh, got used to uh, um, even though we haven't got plans to spend it in this transfer window as the transfer deadline day now ends we still have plans to possibly bring someone in in January with like what 41 million pounds plus the fact if we do uh, get for our Champions League group we'll get an extra 10 million pounds for that that'll be 50 million pounds so yeah we could make a big signing in January and that was my reasoning basically by trying to get a little bit more cash before the window ended and also leaving in the kitty until January so there you go and uh, yeah transfer deadline they ended uh, you saw you come on for report there and Danilo also got a free week injury which is a bit of a shame and you can see how the squad is currently getting on in the squad report right now as I mentioned before this is our final season with Torino hence why why it was pretty obvious that's why I decided to sell Aguero uh, to buy Munich. Otherwise, I probably would have kept him here. But it's the final season. I wanted to do something big, something different, try and change the team as much as possible, just to make it a little bit more fresh for you guys. And we've certainly done that. You know, the, the first eleven now has completely changed. We changed formation as well. Got so many new players in, and. Um, that's basically why I did sell Aguero. So if you guys were wondering why I sold Aguero after winning us the Champions League last season with those two goals, it was just to change things around, try and keep the series as fresh as possible. Because I know that the series is losing a lot of interest, and that's totally fine. It happens all the time. I said that before. happens all the time. Um, but either way, I just wanted to do something different for you guys. And uh, and hopefully the change we've made will not only be different, but also successful. But uh, there you go. Still our uh, Champions League group, we've got Atletico Madrid, Porto and Ajax. So a Spanish, a Portuguese and a Dutch side in our Champions League. Champions League group. Those those teams are going to be quite difficult to get past. Porto are a good side. Atletico Madrid, of course, got to the Champions League final in real life a couple of years ago. Um, in, in real life, obviously, in real time. And, of course, Ajax on the game always do really well because they've got so many great young talents. So that's that's going to be quite a difficult group to get out of. You know, it really is. That's going to be quite duff, uh, tough for us. But either way, uh, we have got through our World Cup qualifying group as well. I forgot to show you the table afterwards, but basically all we had to do was avoid defeat in those final two games to qualify, and we've already done that. So, yeah, we've qualified for the World Cup at the end of the season but I don't think I'll play it I'll imagine I'll end after the uh, the season with Torino and not play the World Cup with Italy but we'll have to wait and see you never know do you but uh, still we take on Inter for the first game of today's episode here the first of two games in today's episode Inter come and take us on at the Stadio Olimpico de Torino uh, of course the first game in the league was a victory against Empoli away from home we won by two goals to nil so coming into this game our first home league game of the season defending our title uh, hopeful of uh, making it free and free uh, that's three titles in three years 
In the first chance, fell to us in the 33rd minute. Neymar got played forward. His shot was off target and behind for a goal kick. But honestly, not much really happened in this game until the 57th minute when Lucas got on the ball for us. The Brazilian keeps hold of the ball, plays it out wide towards Darmian, starting ahead of the injured Danilo. Inside towards Masasha, back to Lucas, back to Darmian. Darmian then finds Neymar, the Brazilian, who plays it across the pitch towards Alexandro, another Brazilian. He keeps hold of the ball, then finds an Englishman, the only one we got in Raheem Sterling, who fakes shots around his man, gets himself inside to shoot, and Raheem Sterling gets his first goal in a Torino shirt just before the hour mark. So, like him, loathe him, or have no opinion whatsoever like I do, Raheem Sterling is a really, really good young talent. And of course, in the game, 84 overall, 22 years old. He came in for £18 million. I could not say no to that deal. That seemed like a great one, in my opinion. And Sterling gets his first goal in a Torino shirt here when cutting in from the left. So, good strike by Raheem Sterling there. He gets his first goal for the club, and it is 1 0 to Torino just before the hour mark here in this game. So, Torino 1 into 0. And a few minutes later, a great chance to make it 2 0. Neymar gets played forward here, tries to rainbow flick over Inokia, gets a little bit lucky, plays it through towards Shalanolu. That's a good stop by Bardi, though, and eventually in to get the ball away. So, still Torino 1 into 0. Really good save there. And in the 80th minute, as we go on the break, Florenzi plays a great through ball towards Shiro Amoble, who goes through 1 and 1 and does tuck it past Bardi after a few step overs and roll the ball into the open goal. However, I will say this if you want to go back and watch that again, in Mobile, I thought when I watched uh, when I played this game in real time, he was on side because you can't be offside when you're in your own half. So I thought that's what the linesman must have thought, you know, he was on side because he was in his own half. But if you watch that back, when Florenzi releases the ball, he's got his right foot over the line. So that should have been called offside there. But uh, either way, I guess the uh, linesman didn't see that. He must have thought, like I did, he was still in his own half. But I don't think he was. I think he might have had his right foot over the line or possibly his whole body over. I'm not too sure. But either way, it's uh, still Torino 2 into nil uh, as in Mobley uh, does double the scoring there. In the 84th minute, Inter went relatively close, but Bernie tips the ball over the bar and keeps it at 2-0 from the corner. It's crossed in. Maximovic heads the ball away. Inter Carver, another chance though. Medell finds Icardi, who gets past his man and finds Kovacic inside to shoot, but the Croatian shot goes wide of the post and behind for a goal kick. So still Torino 2 into nil. And the final chance would fall to Inter the ninth minute, uh, 90th minute. We fail to get the danger away. It comes to Balotelli. He rolls it through towards Kovacic, who smacks the ball off the woodwork. It doesn't cross the line. And then, well, I mean, we've added some good players to our team in the offensive positions. We've signed Arialdo as well to play centre-half, but that piece of defending right there was just absolutely embarrassing. There were three Torino players stood next to the ball, and somehow... Somehow, it ended up at the feet of Icardi, who just rolls the ball into the bottom corner and says, thank you very much, lads. I do not know how on earth I failed to get rid of that ball there. I was tapping circle like a madman, but somehow I failed to clear it. It's my fault, obviously, and Icardi just taps it in. So, Torino 2 into 1. Sad to lose our clean sheet in stoppage time, but either way, it was just going to be a consolation goal. We, did deserve, um, we didn't exactly deserve the win. You can see with the possession and stuff, but either way, we were never going to lose our lead right at the end of the game. And there you go. Also, I did forget to show the player of the match, I should say. Um, but it would have gone to Sterling. I don't know why, but for some reason I did record it, or at least I thought I did, but I couldn't find it in my playback footage. So, yeah, Sterling was my man of the match. He got an 8.1, I think it was, and uh, he did get the first goal of the game as well. So Sterling was my man of the match, and there you go. And we take on Porto for the second and final game of today's episode here in the Champions League. Of course, we're defending our Serie A title, and for the first time, we're defending our Champions League title as well. We won the Champions League last season. We beat Manchester United in the final, got revenge on them after two years ago when they knocked out in the semi-final. So taking on Porto, just the first step of hopefully many on our route to uh, winning the Champions League final for a second successive year and the first chance would fall to us in the fourth minute Sterling who scored against Inter goes down the right hand side lovely shot of pace, agility and balance here to get himself inside to shoot but the shot hits the post and goes behind for a goal kick, it would have been a great goal there but it was still goalless and in the 18th minute here a great chance to make it 1-0, Sterling finds Gary Dini inside towards Clement Grenier, the French midfielder gets himself inside a little bit fortunately but it's a great stop by the goalkeeper, he tips it onto the bar and then the follow up header also hits the bar and eventually Porto get the ball away. Only as far as Grenier though, but his shot is quite tame. And as you can see, it goes straight to the goalkeeper. So still Torino nil, Porto nil. already hitting the woodwork three times in this game. And in the 66th minute, Neymar gives the ball away after I was trying to do some skill there stupidly. Gave it away. Brahimi finds Quaresma. He's got a lot of curve, but couldn't burn that one in. And it is still nil nil. And in the 86th minute, one of the final chance fell here. It's still goalless. Gabby Dini shot well saved by the goalkeeper, Fabiano. And turned behind for a uh, corner. So still goalless and from the corner. Gabby Dini crosses the ball in. Looks for Alberto Pelos 
Lewandowski. It gets flicked down only as far as Baselli. Plays a quick one two of Engels. Baselli strikes him just outside the area, and it's a whisker away from the far post. But it does go behind for a goal kick. And that was how the game would finish. Torino nil, Porto nil. Not the best of games, but we had quite a few chances in that one. Hit the woodwork on three separate occasions, but sadly couldn't find the back of the net. Porto didn't play too well, to be honest. If anyone deserved to win it, it would have been us. But either way, final score was nil nil. And I guess a goalless draw is better than a loss in the first game of the group stage. So take the positives, remain positive, five games to go. It's not a big blow for us. But that does end the episode, guys. So as always, a big thank you for watching the video. Really hope you have enjoyed it. If you enjoyed today's episode of Torino Career Mode, then please do leave a like. It's much appreciated. It really does help my channel out. And I'll see you for the next episode of Torino Career Mode very soon.